Hi, we are from Dutch Sisters, and today we are here to introduce our journey from Little Lake to Lake House with Databricks. My name is Hemin Kang, and I am the head of BI at Dev Sisters. Hi, I'm Sing Young, the head of data platform at Dev Sisters. We Dev Sisters are the creator of Cookie and Franchise with over 200 million fans globally. We had launched our new mobile game called Cookie and Kingdom in 2021. It's, a, it's basically a social role-playing game and city-building battler with very cute cookies. And it has been loved by over 40 million users worldwide. From the love of our fans, we have earned People's Choice Award at Pocket Gamer Mobile Game Awards, which is strictly selected based on the number of players vote. Additionally, we have had a successful collaboration with Disney recently. So if you like these little gingerbread cookies, I strongly suggest to check it out. So enough of our introduction. I'll hand over the presentation to Sung Young to explain what we have been working on data-wise to bring this success to our company. Okay, let's look at the data environment of Dev Sisters. We have been providing all our production service through AWS since 2011, which is quite early, especially in South Korea, where Dev Sisters is headquartered. Naturally, even before the concept of a data lake was created, we were actively utilizing AWS S3 to load and utilize all logs and data. Then, after a few years, people started it to call it as data lake. Since 2015, from the heart of MR based architecture, we moved to Apache Spark and we have been operated Spark based ETL and analysis environment. There are many challenging traits in our data. As mentioned earlier, we provide services to many global users, so the size of data is quite large. Also, we have large amount of data per unit user due to the nature of game domain. In addition, since new features are frequently developed or existing features are often changed in game services, most of our, our data are semi-structured, the types of data are diverse, the schema is complex and frequently changed. So to meet those needs, we are solving the problem of creating a big data platform environment that can efficiently analyze tens of millions of user data. We adopted Databricks from summer 2021. To make a contrast, I will introduce the architecture before Databricks first. Our main data sources are logs, and database snapshots. Also, we use many kinds of semi-structured data. All each logs are collected to the centralized log pipeline based on Kafka. Then we store them by daily batch using Spark. Also, using those data, we have ETR tasks for data warehouse and data mart. Most of them are stored using Apache Parquet format. Using those transform data, we run ad hoc analysis or EDA using Spark. Also, we have query engines based on Spark Drift servers and Amazon Athena for dashboard and BI tool integrations. In early days, Data scientists or software engineers created and managed this tech, mm -hmm. including data warehouse and or bot task. Since there were many limitations to create more advanced data warehouse or data bot, we have decided to build a new business intelligence or BI team. However, members of BI team experienced many difficulties in this environment. Kevin will share detailed stories. Before joining Dev Sisters, I had been building data warehouses on a more traditional platform like on-premise Microsoft SQL Server. 
So you can probably imagine the number of challenges that I had to face you joining this company. Basically, all the knowledge I had about data handling had to be changed. Due to the parquet file-based system, I didn't have much freedom on data transformation. And as the first environment was PySpark, even though there are functions that resemble SQL, it wasn't as easy without enough of Python knowledge. Even after Spock SQL environment was set up, some of the PySpark functions aren't supported and it wasn't as customizable as I'd expect from PLSQL. So we decided to implement Databricks to find better ways to handle big data transformation. We have adopted Lakehouse architecture that Databricks suggests. It consists with Databricks SQL, Delta Lake, and Unity Catalog. Especially with Delta, we had much better experience on handling Parquet. Additionally, Lakehouse provided unified platform that combines Data Lake and Data Warehouse. It was essential because we Dev Sisters believe avoiding data silo is key to our success. Due to this decision, our data specialists like data engineers, analysts, scientists, and machine learning engineers have been successfully creating valuable data assets. Lifetime value estimation modeling is an example of something that can only be achieved in Lakehouse as it requires data from both Data Lake and Warehouse. With DLTV modeling, we were able to support various successful marketing campaigns for the Kukuran Kingdom. And now, Sungyong will take over to explain further on our current architecture. So, this is our current architecture for Lakehouse. We have replaced most of our valuable data, what David Alfrix called the gold data, with Delta Lake. And we are using Databricks SQL as our main query engine when doing much of data activities on the right side, such as add door queries, dashboarding, and so on. In summary, as a global gaming company, DevSysTurge has a challenging data environment. Agile data decision making is essential in this fast-paced entertainment industry. But it is very hard to fulfill this requirement since data size is huge and most of data are semi-structured. So we adopted Databricks and Delta Lake-based Lakehouse architecture, which allows faster, better, and more effective data-driven decision-making. In this year's Data AI Summit, there were many new feature releases and announcements. With now generally available Unity Catalog, we are planning to build fully integrated Lakehouse. And we expect to focus on creating more intrinsic value of data through Delta Lake's new feature and serverless SQL. So we hope you enjoyed our journey with Databricks. Thank you for watching.